Welcome to Electron Line. Here we have a situation where the disc has a different radius than the attachment on which the string is attached in such a way that the velocity of the mass as it falls down here is not going to be the same as the velocity tangential of the edge of the disc. So we'll have to take that into account. Ultimately, the potential energy contained within the mass of this mass here as it reaches the bottom will be converted into translational kinetic energy for this mass and rotational kinetic energy for the disc. We're going to not include the rotational kinetic energy of the stem here, assuming the mass is very small and we can ignore it. So what is the final velocity as this mass reaches the bottom from a height of one meter? Again, the way we approach it is by saying that the initial energy at the beginning, which is going to be potential energy, is equal to energy final, which is going to be a combination of the translational kinetic energy of this mass and the rotational kinetic energy of the disk. So this becomes the original potential energy is equal to the final translational kinetic energy of the mass plus the final rotational kinetic energy of the rotating disk. Potential energy initial is going to be mgh, and that will be equal to one-half mv final squared plus the rotational kinetic energy of the disk, which is going to be one-half i omega final squared. Now next we're going to plug in what i and omega final are equal to. Now this is going to be mgh, the original potential energy, equals one-half mv final squared plus one half the moment of inertia of a rotating disk is going to be one half the mass notice it's a different mass than the mass of the falling object times r squared notice i used capital letter r to indicate the radius of the rotating disk times omega final now omega final let's see here we can write omega final in terms of the tangential velocity of the disk, but that's not the same as the velocity over here. So we have to find a way to relate that. How can we do that? Well, the following. We can say that the omega can be found by saying the velocity tangential, tangential is equal to r times omega. Now this is the tangential velocity of this, which we have to relate to the tangential velocity of this, which is equal to the velocity of the object. R and omega are known. R is 25 centimeters. Omega will be the omega of the disk here. Okay? So how do we relate that to the velocity of the object? Now we can say that we can relate the velocity of the object to the radius of the small stem right here that's going to be equal to r times omega. And notice that r is 25 centimeters and small r is five centimeters. So this is going to be equal to 25 centimeters times omega, and this is going to be five centimeters times omega, which tells us that the tangential velocity of the disk is going to be five times as large as the velocity of the object. So the velocity tangential is equal to five times the velocity of the object. That we can then plug in here. Omega can now be written as follows. Omega is equal to V tangential over the radius. So we can then replace V tangent for five times V of the object. So omega can be written as five times the velocity of the object divided by R. When we replace that in here, remember it's omega squared. So this will be five squared times velocity squared divided by r squared. So that's how we make the proper change from the string being attached to the post which has a radius of 5 centimeters and the tangential velocity of the disk which is, uh, has a radius of 25 centimeters. Now we can still see that the r squares cancel out. This v of the object is the same as of course this v final right here. So we can write this as v final. And now we can simplify the equation moving over here. On the right side, we have mgh is equal to one-half mv final squared, which is the translational kinetic energy of the object, plus 25 divided by 4, 25 divided by 4, times the mass of the disk, times
times velocity final squared. And of course, we're trying to find v final squared, so what we must do here is factor out of v final squared. We get mgh is equal to v final squared times one half times the mass of the object plus 25 over 4 times the mass of the disk. And so v final squared becomes equal to, or I can just simply take the square root, so v final is equal to the square root of the left side equation, which is mgh, and we take this portion over here, move it over here, becomes the denominator, one half times the mass of the object plus 25, 25 over 4 times the mass of the disk. And that will be equal to the square root of, now we can plug in all the numbers, the mass of the object, 5 kilograms, times 9.8, times the height of 1 meter, divided by 1 half times the mass of the disk, plus 25 over 4, like this, times the mass of the disk. I should say mass of the object, and that would be mass of the disk. All right, there we go. The fours here cancel out. Now we need a calculator. So in the numerator, we get 5 times 9.8, which is 49, divided by 27.5 equals and we take the square root, which is 1.33 meters per second. V final equals 1.33 meters per second. All right, and that would be the final velocity in this case. So you can see if the string is attached to something different than the actual disk that's rotating, you do need to take care of that radius difference. And this is how it's done.